So we spent quite some time to uh, have a quantitative view on the formation of channel. We say this is an MOS. And a transistor is nothing but just a transfer resistor. We rely on the gate to control the resistance between the source and drain, right? We have a source here, we have a drain here, we have a gate here. And because this is n-type, the body is p-type, this is n-type. When your gate voltage is low, or a more uh, technical term is that when it is smaller, right, than the threshold voltage. Then you actually form a PN bed to bed PN dial. As you can see from this figure, NP N, right? So that's not going to it's not going to conduct any current, right? So this is the so-called off state, right? It doesn't conduct anything. This is a resistor, a very a resistor with a very large uh, resistance. Then we start increasing, and, and in, at this mode, we call it accumulation mode. Right. The reason it we call it accumulation is because the body, while well, uh, this is the major part of the transistor, is p-type. When we have a very negative bias, we attract all the hole there. So I accumulate the hole. Thank you. Right? Accumulate. So what do we do? We start increasing the gate bias. At this stage, still it is smaller than the threshold voltage, right? But we start having a more positive potential. As a result, we repel all the hole away, right? We just repel them because you have a positive bias, more positive bias, you start repelling the hole. Then what left over will be some negative charge. But this is negative immobile ions okay so yes i have a lot of negative charge here i have electron here electron here again it's not going to flow no current can flow right it's just like i have a water pipe left and right i have water but at the middle i have the eyes yeah they are all water h2o but the eyes cannot move okay although they are not electron this and negative charge is due to this immobile ion right so I still don't have current. And eventually, when the gate voltage is larger than the threshold voltage, right, under certain condition, not just that I repel the hole away, I actually also attract a lot of free electron here. Okay? But this was the p-type. Now I have electron. It's just like it is an n-type. That's why we call this the inversion we inverted the channel we invert it so that now there can be a flow of the current right this is a very qualitative uh, view but this is something more important than any other things right more important than the theory that you are uh, uh, or the theory because you will forget the theory in the future but this view of the transistor, I hope that you can always remember, right? And I forgot to say that this is the so-called depression, right? Because the substrate now does not have any free carrier. I mean, it has at the bottom, but not at the surface, right? It does not have hole. It does not have electron. So it is depleted of carriers, okay? Any questions? If no, then we spend some time to understand a very important concept. It is that this transistor 
from the gate to the channel is just uh, connected by a capacitor, right? Because we have the electro on the top, which is metal. At the bottom, it can be conductive, depends on the situation. But if it is in inversion, we have a lot of electron, as we just said, right? Inversion. So this is just a capacitor. So the reason we can control the resistance is because we change the gate voltage and we through this capacitor, we call capacitive coupling, right? This is a keyword that you want to say, right? If you are in an interview, capacitive coupling, right? You couple the electric field, right? And we realize that as this is a capacitor, then of course the amount of charge going to be induced is going to be, you're going to follow Q equal to CV, right? I have a large capacitance, I apply the voltage across it, I will induce a large, a, a large amount of charge, Q equal to CV. And what is V? V is the potential between this two terminal across the capacitor. So it must be Vg minus Vx. Vx is just the potential at this point. But it's not constant. It depends on the location, right? It starts from zero to Vdd, to Vd, right? So that's why Q equal to the capacitance times Vg uh, times Vg Vgs minus Vx, okay? And actually, I should not say Vgs. So uh, here, I assume uh, Vs equal to zero. Otherwise, I would should I should just say this is Vg, right? Vg minus Vx. Is this okay? Now, but then, why we subtract also the trestle voltage? Because it is only after the trestle voltage would it intro induce some free electron. Before the trestle voltage, it does induce charge, but they are not mobile. They are not contributing to the current. That's why if I want to know how much free electron it has, I actually multiply by Vs minus Vx minus Vth, because Vs minus Vx is the capacitance. Vg minus Vx is the, is the voltage across this capacitor, okay? And we did not derive it, we just use all the equation that you learned in E128. You will be able to come up with this equation. And again, this, is, this equation is important. And let me remind you again, what, why it's important? Uh, I mean, how do we un understand this equation? Well, the currents, of course, depends on the width and the length of the transistor because it's a resistor, right? It depends on the mobility how fast the electron can move for a given electric field. It depends on the capacitance. Again, because we use the capacitor to induce the charge. The larger the capacitor, the, uh, more, the more the charge you can indu induce, right? And then why Vg minus Vth? Because this is only after the Vth would you indu induce some free carrier, right? That's why Vg minus Vth. And why is related to VDS? Because it's a resistor. Of course, it the current depends on the voltage across the two terminal. So everything makes sense. Okay. Any questions? This is for the triad region. Here is the trial region. Very good. So now I'm talking about a low VD, yeah. and then we will start going to high VD. Correct. This is the trial region, right? And that is what we see.